And the illustration is a compass. And uh, yeah, I think uh, I like the one with a pretty girl. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Okay, so we have Dr. Adesi in the house. It's great to have you on the show, man. Great to have much. you. Great to have I you. I fell in love with her a few seconds. <laughs> when she that. came on, I'm like, Jairus, stop that. What? I fell in love the... with her. Come on. You know, we do stop She's different. like yes, my so idol. Don't... Just, I love fine. her already. Okay. You studied theatre as she's a medical practitioner. I want to be a medical practic practitioner because of you. I'll probably go, go become a training it. nurse. Go for it. Yes. <laughs> At this age, when yes. you have to finish, when, you have, when you're 62. No, no, no. You it's can never use it. You never, you never she's, know she's when She's like 45 it. now. When she's in, you want to be done here like 62. 45. She's not like 25. You're not living anymore. No, me, I'm like 12. You're 12. Seriously. Glad to have you. Don't mind this. Nice to be here. I have been itching, 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 itching to ask you this question. You take all the questions today, I'm, I'm, I'll just be like this. Seriously, seriously. You'll be itching. Shall you be itching? <laughs> There's so, I've been talking about myth busters. You're going to bust so many myths today. I'll try my especially, best. Especially, well, when it comes to female reproductive health. Okay. A lot of people are getting married recently. My friends are getting married in mm -hmm. recent times. And there have been different things coming up. Okay, you have to do this. Okay. You have to be sexually active in some tribes. You have to be sexually active before you get into the marriage so the man can know if you can be pregnant and all that. So I just want you to make, make it clearer to people like, okay, this can be done normally. You don't have to go the extra mile, endangering the health of the woman and all that. Mm -hmm. Let him hear it from a doctor's perspective. Right. Okay. I hope my friends are watching right now. There's a doctor here. There's a party in the ad. No, no, no. Whenever she goes for those weddings and comes back, mommy, mommy Jairo will be like, Jairo. Did you see them? That's not important now. Okay. We're talking to the doctor. Let's go. <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's yeah. go. Carry on. Okay, well, um, yes, I basic think... advice for uh, someone getting into marriage or someone that wants to be acting. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why I, I always feel that marriage is for matured people. You know, you need to know your own mind. You need to be able to make your own decisions. Mm -hmm. So you don't do things because every other person is doing it. You mm -hmm. know, like you mentioned, the man wants to know if you'll be pregnant. You know, is that what you want? You know, mm. what are your own values, your own morals? You've mm. got to stick to them, mm. despite what the rest of society is doing. Tribe, religion. Yeah. Yes, because you need to be comfortable yourself with what you're doing. You're not doing something just because people think you should, and mm. then you're not happy with yourself. Mm. So my, what I'll say to young people, ladies, is you've got to believe in yourself. You've got to be confident enough to say, this is not what I want, you know. Okay. You know I, I, I know the men will want to sleep with the person to mm -hmm. see if they can get pregnant, but... Mm. It's not what I want, so I'll rather have a relationship, get to know the person better, have a committed relationship before we go down that route. You Thank know? you so very much, Dr. Mm. Desi. See, yeah. <laughs> you know I asked her this question? There are a million and one questions that I know you want to ask right now. The phone lines are open, though. Dr. Desi is in the house for you, not for us, so don't expect us. Do you want to ask questions? You're free to ask questions. She's a medical practitioner. She will give you details of everything you didn't know. I actually love this illustration. <laughs> You're talking more than her. You're talking more than her. Sorry, me the lines are open. The numbers to call are 080-912-2283-848586. Also 0814-0000-283 and 284. Mike. Okay, medicine abroad. Medicine abroad. Here it says a comp compulsory for medics trained outside the Western world. What inspired this kind of title and why do you think that this is compulsory for right. medics trained outside the Western world? Well, from my own experience, I trained here. I, I, I obtained my MBA, MBBS at the University of Nigeria in Suka. So I'm, I'm one of you. I'm okay. a lioness. Mm -hmm. Then after that, I went to the UK and trained as a family physician. Now, one of the things I found out is when I arrived there, everything was moving so fast. Wow. Nobody had time to stop to give directions, you know, to tell mm. you what to do and so on. Mm. So I really, I felt I needed a guide, something to guide me, you know, but it wasn't available. There was no information as to how best to go about things. So I'm finding out that many of our medics are coming abroad with no idea at all about the differences in, you know, there are cultural differences. The culture out there is different. There are societal expectations that are quite different from what the society here expects. Mm. There are patient expectations that are different too. So the patients over there expect different things from the patients here, what they expect from doctors. Mm. So I found out that people come, they don't know these differences and they get into trouble. In fact, a recent investigation by The Telegraph, it's a big UK paper, found out that two thirds of the doctors that, were, that had their names erased from the medical register were trained abroad. Wait, 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 wait. Erased. You mean their names are erased as they cannot practice they no more? They cannot practice medicine. Their lessons Anywhere are else. revoked. Well, at the moment, UK, for example, UK, your name is erased. 
you can disappear somewhere else. But now, they're beginning to share information with other countries. Whoa. So wow. if your name is erased here, they need to pass on that information to other medical councils. Mm. So you may not be able to practice anywhere again. Okay. Now, if you put that into perspective with the training the doctor has undergone, almost 10 years of medical training, you know, if you factor in ASUS strike and, uh, you know, all sorts of, many people have to take the MBBS exams a number of times to pass it. Yeah. So after all that training, and sometimes a lot of families support these, you know, in, the individuals with all their family resources, get them yeah. to train as doctors. You can imagine all that and then your name is erased. Oh, shit. Hmm. No cool, no cool. Because I, I have of lack that, of information. I have friends that wrote MBE like three, four times, and I'm wondering. And, and when you have a um, university system yeah. where you can spend eight, nine, ten years yes. just okay. for a seven mm -hmm. year or less course. Okay, so, but, okay, but now the point is this is this book now for people living, um, let's say, abroad, mm -hmm. Nigerians living abroad, mm -hmm. for them to maybe acclimatize? Who would you say this book is really for? Right, the book is for any medical person you know within the medical line who wants to go abroad and practice okay or who is thinking about it or just wants to know how are things done abroad oh. let me have a taster first before i go wow All so right. that people don't turn up and they don't know what to do and they get into trouble okay. so i've written it from the perspective of a migrant myself i came mm. from here and went over there mm. you know so i've written my story the stories from other people who are practicing abroad are also written i've tackled issues to do with the exams there the life as a medic, the medical regulations, and so on, what people can do to keep safe, really. Okay. So okay. that's why there's a compass there. It's a guide. Yeah, it's really. a guide. It yeah. really, but you know. looking, looking at it, medics abroad makes me wonder, so those that um, studied abroad, you, you practice abroad, coming back, would it be easier since you're in a different system? Coming back, don't you think it would be the same thing, changing well, environment? I, I think there will always be that need to acclimatize again. Mm -hmm. So even if like, I've been away for some time, if I came back, I'll need to know how things are being done. Okay, so this book takes care of everything or just for those going, over, going there. over there? Yes, oh, takes right. care of all the issues that people need to know about. I mean, there are books on the exam and so on, mm -hmm. but these, this book talks about the detailed things that people, nobody will hear, any, you know, people won't think of telling you that. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, when I was going, someone said to me, someone abroad said, just come, they give doctors jobs, I just come, just come. So <laughs> off I went, left my job here and went. Uh -huh. And I got there in September of one year, only to find out that the visa category I was hoping for had been disbanded in wow. April of that year. Wow. So I found myself in a big... You know, As you fix. understood that wow. Kaki no be leather. Yes. <laughs> no, okay. So information is critical. You mm. can't just take off and go. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're embarking on a journey, you want to find out oh, how do I get to my destination? What do mm. I expect there? In the same way, people traveling or thinking of traveling need the information to okay. know exactly what to do. You were nominated for two impressive awards, right? Author of the year and also mm. um, for sexual, uh, women's sexual health and all of that. I mean, that's quite cool. Tell us. What does it take? I mean, being nominated for those kind of awards and all about what did you? What does it take to be nominated, to be thought of, or be, to be in the mix for those kind of awards? Well, <laughs> it was a good surprise. You know, I was okay. quite pleased. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, when are the awards holding? When are they holding, by the way? Well, um, the, earlier, earlier on in okay. the year, we had earlier these, on the way. Okay, these, all right. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. one, the one you mentioned, the sexual health professional of yeah. the year, that's usually given to somebody who has contributed to sexual health. You know. Um, and it's quite a big one because by the Family Planning Association of UK. So I was quite pleased to be recognized by my colleagues, mm -hmm. you know. And it's mainly to do with my work with the ethnic minority women. Like um, most of our black ladies are not taking contraception, even though they don't want to be pregnant. Mm -hmm. you know? Wait, wait. Mm -hmm. When you say contraception, so that's what we understand. Right. It's postino contraception. <laughs> it's, I, it's, it's one of them. Or postino too. Okay, because How come you know that? No, no, I just he, he hear, Jaya tells me, Jaya is interested about it. You have, have to lie, you have to lie on national TV like, hello. Wait, now, come down. <laughs> <Hello. laughs> you'll, you'll be talking about medicine and all that and all that. Okay, so now I want to start talking about sexual health. Okay. And uh, let's, no, from this me. one. Leave that to me, I'm holding the book so dearly. Oh, no, no, don't okay. go okay. there. Okay. Don't go there. Okay. Okay. I'm <laughs> not saying anything. Okay, so, but then, also the Afro-Caribbean health event, which you also do and all about that. That's great work. But then let's talk about sexual health. We had, you took a story about someone complaining about um, sexual health. I Generally. Mean, but but I, would, I would like to start from the book. Okay. From the okay. book that you, yes, this is a 
there's a general expose about medicine abroad. It's for everybody, not just for doctors, by the way. So you yeah. can read it. Actually, people, know. especially parents who want their children to go and practice abroad, Study. you need to get them to read the book. Oh, no, okay. You don't just throw them out and I hope things will work out. People oh. get into trouble. Oh, okay. you know, so that information is for children. If your children want to travel or you just want to give to someone who is within the medical line, Mm -hmm. That will help them as well. Okay, so back to understanding contraception. Mm -hmm. The Guide for Black Ladies. This is a book I want to read. I'm taking this one. I just, Go ahead. I just, <laughs> I just obtained the book right now on National TV. It feels so great. Okay, so this book, what prompted um, you to write this book? What, what was the situation? Mm -hmm. How did it start up? How did you just... Well, one about? of the things that a lot of ladies ask me about is things to do with contraception. I as found a doctor? That, as a doctor, yes. You know, How many percent? Most of our consultations with ladies are things sexually related. Mm. Either they've come with an infection, you know, chlamydia, you know, all these sexually transmitted infections, or they're worried about the discharge, or, you know, things like that, sexually related. Mm -hmm. So, but one of the things I found was that our ladies are coming to request abortion, you know, and I say to them, so what contraception were you using? And they'll say none. I'm like... If you're sexually active, you don't want to get pregnant, you need to be on contraception. Mm -hmm. you know? But I found out that they're afraid of the contraception or they think it causes cancer, it causes one thing or the other. You know, a lot of yeah, stories like that. that some certain contraceptives give um, ovarian cysts. Yes, so can, some of them can, you know, but the ovarian cysts are, are benign, what we call benign, they're not harmful, you know, oh. they're not cancers, if you see what I mean. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so it, it was just explaining to them about these different contraceptions and explaining that you can't find something that suits you because people feel, oh, this one doesn't, I don't like this one, I don't like that. But there, there are lots of them out there, so everyone can find something that suits them. Mm -hmm. And I found out that, you know, after the abortion, people can have a lot of regrets, a lot of emotional guilt and things like that, which nobody needs, you know. Mm -hmm. We want women to to maximize their potentials, not to be weighed down by one guilt or the other, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm saying to them, you really need to use contraception if you don't want to get pregnant. All right. And, and right now in the UK, our black ladies have the highest rates of recurrent abortion. Whoa. So not just one, but they come again and again. Whoa, so it's about amazing. encouraging their education, helping them understand. And that's why my book came about. Okay, so apart from uh, contraceptive, okay, people that believe in natural methods, are there any natural methods in existence? Yes, Apart there, from, are, there you know, are. They'll tell you uh, abstinence is just overrated. No, no, no. Be realistic. Okay, fine. Apart from abstinence, mm -hmm. are there any natural methods to mm -hmm. prevent mm -hmm. unwanted pregnancy, diseases, and all that? Well, the natural methods we recognize are things like checking your cervical mucus. So the the fluid that comes out from the woman. <laughs> I don't know if I should be talking about this. <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> it's health. They need this. You know. Yes, yes, you should. So you can, if a woman gets used to what comes out, she knows it changes with ovulation, you see. Mm -hmm. So ovulation is when the egg is released. So when your, what comes out changes, you know, oh, there's, a, there's an egg somewhere around, so I mm -hmm. mustn't have sex at this period. Mm -hmm. So that's one natural method. Another way would be, you know, abstinence, like you mentioned, but not everybody can ex abstain, especially our men mm. don't want you to abstain, you know. <laughs> and then <laughs> we have things like checking your temperature, you know. Oh. Um, oh. Your temperature changes during, just before ovulation. Oh. Okay, but I feel that if they become dependent on this kind of... Yes. They will, they, they will have issues. They will definitely get pregnant. If they become dep exactly. dependent on Exactly, that's why they're not that... They're not that um, um, effective. Mm -hmm. That's why we're saying you may need to go a step further and use some of the other methods like mm -hmm. the pill, the implants, the coils and so on. But all the attention is drawn to female sexual reproductive health. What about the men? The men, some men are everywhere. So how do you, so the women have to be like defensive? <laughs> they can't well, it's, it's a big issue. You know, one of the things I'm hoping is that we, we, they, they invent a contraception that we can just drop into the man's cup without him knowing, you know. Mm. <laughs> but we haven't gotten there yet. Okay. Uh, I gave a talk to some men, some Nigerian men in Abad in the UK, and I spoke about male sterilization, and they were all like, no, 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 no. You know, they wouldn't hear about it at all, mm. you know. But male sterilization is a method of contraception. Mm. If a man is convinced that he doesn't want any more children, you know, and he is, he's definitely sure he doesn't, then he can get sterilized. Mm -hmm. And the good thing about it is that 
it won't affect the man's engine, so to speak. Mm. Oh, okay. You can still have your erection and everything. Mm. You know, it's just that when you shoot, you're shooting blanks. Oh, man, I don't like that, man. <laughs> Elo don't like that, too. Okay, let's talk about this. Let's talk about... Why did you have to drag Elo in this? <laughs> what did I say? No, you should have... Elo. I said Elo, like... That's what I said. No, 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 no. I okay, now, Elo. let's talk... Um, uh, generally, now, let's talk about... Um, uh, what do you call it now? Let's talk about sexual health. How, how do you generally maintain a good sexual health for okay. male and female? I think the first, the key thing is to be, you know, to be truthful to one person, you know, just have one sexual partner who also has you, just you as their sexual partner. Mm. So being faithful to each other is very important, mm. you know, and if, if you can't be faithful, if you can't, then you need to protect your partner by using condoms. Mm. Some men sleep around, but they still sleep with their, their wives, mm -hmm. you know, without you know, they don't use condoms when they go out. So these infections just pass on to everyone. Wow. You know, even things like HIV, HIV continues to be a it's major awesome. player in the, in the sexual health and sin. Mm -hmm. I, know, I, I know it's transmitted in other ways by blood transfusion and so on, but sexually still remains a major Im impact, mm -hmm. especially among our women, because oftentimes the woman, not always, but the woman would have kept herself, for example, mm -hmm. you know, in the relationship. But it's men that may have other partners. Mm. So our why, women why, are why? disgruntled. No, no, I don't do agree. No, I'm just, no, no, no. Uh, it's not it's, in every it's case. It's an instance. It's not in a, but the statistics, the statistics. Hey, so men, are you out there? Do you agree with that? <laughs> yes! <laughs> the statistics show that the women are, are more affected. You understand? Mm. Yes. It's so more. it's really important that uh, if, if a man knows they're going out, they need to use condoms so they, ca they can keep people protected. All right. Um, I'm going to take you back to the Afri Afro Caribbean right. health events. Yes. Do you have them in Nigeria too? At the moment, just in the UK. Just in the UK. Yes. Okay. And, and the reason for the Afro Caribbean health event was because I found out that a lot of there are some conditions that are more common in. Africans, things like, for example, diabetes, type 2 diabetes, is up to five times more common in Africans. Oh, okay. you know? So it was just to raise the awareness of these conditions that are common in Africans. I say to our people, these are the statistics. We need to begin to make changes now to change the statistics. Mm. If your father died of diabetes, are you preparing to die of diabetes? You mm. understand? What can you do to make sure you don't go the same way? Mm. If your father had a stroke, what can you do now to make sure you don't have a stroke? So that's the aim of the Afro Caribbean what can health you do? event. There are many if your things... father had diabetes or your father had a stroke, what mm -hmm. can you do? Lifestyle I'm changes sure. is okay. a major one. Like what? For example, if I see someone who is very fat, yeah, I can predict that if they don't have hypertension now, then in the next few months or years they will have it. Mm. There are some conditions that go hand in hand. Being fat goes with hypertension, goes with diabetes. You understand? So if we can get the information out there that even though you don't have these things now, if you continue the way you're going, you will have them. The way you're going, what kind of way? Like, so, um, you need to... What kind of... What can you cut out? You need to cut out things that make you add weight. Add weight, yes. okay. So, now we're being... Like, our, our people really love the chicken, the back of the chicken, you know. Mm. The skin. The skin. Mm. But it's full of oil. So even just removing the skin, you know, alone can begin to But that's help. the sweet part now. <laughs> That's not the problem. Can I go to somewhere now? Let me give me a side of chicken that has blood yeah, inside. Yeah, it's not fun. I used to drop it by the outside. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, it's chewy. Yeah, but, it's but, nice. But, but talking okay, about it. reproductive health and well-being generally, mm -hmm. I've noticed that there are a lot of organizations, a lot of events, a lot of buzz about it, but mm -hmm. people don't really take it so seriously. Mm -hmm. They take the, uh, maybe viruses and some big diseases but this is really key it's really important in our general well-being so how how are, how is the afro-caribbean uh, no. community coming to trying to make it possible in nigeria that people should pay more attention to these little little things yes well those are the things we talk about at the event and the information is not just for the people that come for the event but for them to take home to their families you know so we we talk about the sexual health thing and in fact we when we do the afro-caribbean health events we invite the public health to come and test, you know. So there, there's usually free testing for things like HIV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C. People can test for their blood sugar. So, in fact, you know, we've done so well that the, the public health at um, UK, they now support our program, you know. Mm -hmm. So they come and do the testing. They sponsor some of the aspects of the things we do. So 
It's just raising the awareness, you know. For example, the last one we did in June, we had, um, you know, ex people who had, who had had problems with things like um, breast cancer, for example, coming to talk about testing, checking people, even simple things like checking your breast for these things, you know, mm -hmm. it's really mm -hmm. an important aspect of what people need to know about. Women need to be checking their breasts, yeah? Mm -hmm. Because recent research shows that the breast cancers in black women, in African women, is a more aggressive type wow. than the one in white women. Wow. That's why you hear someone has breast cancer and the next minute they are dead, you know? Mm. Wow. It's an aggressive type in black mm. women. Mm. So it's getting the information out there and that's what we do at the Afro-Caribbean Health Events. At the moment, we don't have it in Nigeria, but we're hoping to extend it here, mm. you okay. know, to get people, make, make them more aware of these things. Oh. Okay, but um, let's round up with this. You've not. She was talking about breaking meat. I thought you. She would make you bust yeah, the meat. Yeah, I wanted to. I wanted to bring the friend about breast cancer. To I just want to bust one meat. People believe that, uh, you know, that sucking helps. Is it true? Sucking. Yes. <laughs> sucking what? The breast. Okay. <laughs> There's I a just rumor. want to be sure if it's There's a rumor that sucking the up or sucking the down. The tendency of having breast cancer. Okay. Is that true? Uh, scientifically, I'm not aware of that. Okay. okay then there's aware. another myth that if you take processed food, mm -hmm. there's a higher risk of having breast cancer or any other disease. Or cancers generally, you know. A, a lot of the processed food have um, things within them, you know, preservatives and so on, and those can affect one's health. So everybody should be vegan. Okay. Well, ideally, eat things that are fresh if you can, you know. Well, it's not easy with the sort of lives we live. Everyone wants something that can be quickly made, mm. you know. So. Okay. Well, you didn't bust that meat. So, hey, guys, <laughs> keep up the good work. No, that's All not right. true. She so said it's medically it's not true. So, stop having The food. breakfast show on RTT. We've had doctor days in the house. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank, Thank you so much. It's been discuss with you. Thanks for having Looking me. Looking forward to having can you some other time. Can extend it on Inside Eve. Looking forward to having some other time. Okay, no so um, it's you. been the breakfast show. Thank you very much for tuning in. I just in. wanted to give a gift yes. to your viewers. Hey, no. oh, you my, my book, um, no, okay. So um, just for a uh, thank you for viewing, the first three doctors that call me uh, will get a free copy of my book. You yes. know, what's uh, your number and everything? Right, <laughs> my number you? is zero nine zero nine four nine seven five one five one. I'm only in, the, in, in Nigeria for a few days, but if you call, we will get you a signed copy just to say thank you for viewing on the show. Number again, please. Okay. So <laughs> the number, number again, is 0909-497-5151. Um, okay, if okay you are for calling, the first three doctors. If you are calling, you put your math number. Proof. Your yes, MBBS, your math number, your results. Your certification. Your transcript, everything. Is the number on the certificate? Is that uh, a mental yes, number? A number, yes. We okay. put that number, not when blog okay. and now call and just every doctor. other information, just in case, how do they yes. get to you? Email? Okay, uh, you can email me if you want some more information because I also coach young doctors um, who want to come abroad. Uh, email me on medix700 at gmail.com. So that's medix700 at gmail.com. You can get me on Skype, Adaifez. So A-D-A-I-F-E-Z is my Skype ID. Um, what other contacts? Instagram, Instagram Twitter. Twitter. Okay. Uh, okay, so no, Twitter no, is Adeze Fezlike, as one word. Adeze Fezlike, one word. Instagram is Adeze73. Okay, oh, right. yes. Um, and the book is available in, uh, on o OLX, on Jumia, on Conga, oh. and in bookshops, medical bookshops around the country. All right. Thank you All right, so Thank you very much. much. All right, Thank see you, you tomorrow.